Welcome back to Statistics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to build upon our knowledge of conducting independent t-tests and learn about the f-test, which is actually used to determine whether or not we need to deal with equal variances or unequal variances. Recall for independent t-tests we have either of these options. And while there's really not too much of a difference between these p-values that we got out of these, between the two assumptions, if you want to be rigorously correct, you need to do an F-test. Now, first of all, let me show you how to do an F-test. All right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to preface this by saying, one, I use the Mac version of Excel, and so the Windows version is going to differ slightly, but only very slightly, so it's going to be basically the same. And two, if you have not yet downloaded the Data Analysis Tool Pack, you need to do so, or go watch the video where I explain how to download this Data Analysis Tool Pack. The link to that video is in the description below. Welcome back to Statistics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to build upon the independent t-test and learn how to conduct an f-test, which is used to distinguish between these two assumptions and which one to use, equal variances or unequal variances. So I'm going to preface this by saying I use the Mac version of Excel. The Windows version is going to differ very slightly, but it's basically the same. And two, if you have not yet downloaded the data analysis tool pack, go ahead and do so, or go watch the video in which I explain how to download that tool pack, and um, that will be linked in the description of this video below. All right, so assuming you've downloaded the tool pack, let's go to data, which is up here at the top, whoops, and then go to data analysis. Now here we're at our t-test, so let's actually scroll up, and it should actually say f-test, two sample for variances. So let's click that, and what you're going to do is, let's first get rid of that. I'm going to input my variable 1 range, so I'm going to start here at 13 and drag all the way down to 15. That's my first variable. Let me get rid of the second one. So variable 2 range is this 5 down to the 10. All right. And my confidence level I want to keep is 95%, so that corresponds to an alpha of 0.05. And then let me pick my output range. Let's just say I want the data to appear right there. All right, and then I just hit OK. All right, now, what does all of this mean? All right, so here's what I have. I have a mean, here's my means, so that's something I would normally report. I actually have those down here, right? So my mean is 13.9 and 9.625, I have those here. These are the same values. But the important parts of the F-test really are what are called the F-statistic or our F-value that comes out and our F-critical value. Okay, so here is how you determine whether it's equal variances or unequal variances. And again, I go into this in a different video where we talk about the, more of the theory. But what I do is I compare the F to the F critical value. If this F value is less than the critical one tail value, which it is not here, but if the F value on top was less than this 0 0.3036, then that would be equal variances, okay? So in other words, if this value, this F right here, if that was like 0.1, 0.1 is less than 0.3, so my f would be less than my critical value, therefore that would be equal variances. That is not what we have here. Here my f value is actually greater than my critical value. 0.9 is definitely bigger than 0.3. So in this case, I actually have to reject the null hypothesis that the variances are equal and assume that they are unequal. So, even though there's not much of a difference between these corresponding p-values, regardless of whether it's one tail or two tail, if I was doing this for the purpose of some kind of um, paper that was going to be published, I would probably want to be rigorously correct. And to determine which one it is, I would have to do an f-test. And then I would look at the f-value, 
and see if it's smaller than or bigger than the critical value. If it's bigger than the critical value, equal variances. So what I would have to do is compare the F value to the critical value. And if the F value is smaller than the critical value, you have equal variances between your two groups. If the F value, like in this case, is larger than the critical value, then you have unequal variances. And in this case, I would have to use this set of data. The F test, also know this, is not used for a paired T test. It is only used, at least in terms of T tests, for the independent T test. So when you do a paired T test, which we did in a separate video, you don't ever have to worry about an F test. And the reason you don't is because what the F test is doing is it's testing are, there, are the variances between the two groups, are they basically, in layman's terms, are they different populations or basically the same population? If the same population would mean equal variances, different population is unequal. Well, that's irrelevant in a paired t-test because these come from the same population. You're measuring the same person before or after. Okay? There's no need for it because it's defined as being the same population. Okay? So no need for an f-test here, only when you do an independent t-test. All right, hopefully this video helped you out. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.